In this lesson, we are going to talk about molecular compounds. We will look at the types of elements that form covalent bonds. We will distinguish between ionic and molecular compounds. We will explain how a covalent bond is formed. And we will distinguish between molecules and compounds. Let's refresh our memory about what type of elements go into molecular and ionic compounds. Remember that in a molecular compound we have two or more non-metals. Remember that our non-metals are typically found on the right side of the periodic table. In this drawing they're colored in red. An ionic compound is a metal and a non-metal or it may involve polyatomic ions. Those polyatomic ions could be a cation or an anion. Our metals are on the left side of the periodic table. Here they're shown in blue. Remember that hydrogen is not a metal even though it's on the left side of the periodic table. The elements in green are metalloids. We won't be worried about compounds formed from those for the purposes of identifying molecular versus ionic. When we looked at ionic compounds, electrons were being transferred. For example, in sodium chloride, sodium gave up an electron and chlorine gained an electron to form a cation and anion respectively. In covalent bonds, which are in molecular compounds, electrons are being shared. Let's look at a simple example with hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron, it's also its valence electrons, so it has one electron, and two electrons form a bond. So each hydrogen contributes one electron and they share those two electrons and that forms the bond between the two hydrogen atoms. In hydrogen we're only looking at its one electron which is also its valence. When we look at other elements we will only be worried about their valence electrons being shared to form bonds. We need to be careful in the language we use to describe certain species. For example, Many things are molecules, some of them are compounds, and some of them are not. We can look at these examples to see things that are just molecules and those that are both molecules and compounds. In things that are molecules, they exist as a discrete species. So for example, if we looked at nitrogen, we have two nitrogen atoms attached together and they exist independently of all of the other N2 molecules in whatever container they're in but the two atoms that are connected together are both identical. They're both nitrogen. So this is just a molecule, also known as a molecular element. Other examples include oxygen and fluorine or chlorine that all exist as diatomic molecules. We also see some that are larger such as P4 which exists as four atoms attached together. But notice that all of the atoms are the same. Other species can be both molecules and compounds. For example, CH4 is a molecule because it exists as a discrete molecule and if we had a larger sample of CH4, we would see many CH4 molecules completely separate from all of the other CH4 molecules. So that's what makes it the molecule because it's one discrete species. What makes it a compound is that there's more than one type of atom. In this case, we have a carbon and we have hydrogens. It doesn't matter how many atoms we have or how many different types of atoms, but we just have two or more different types of elements in order to make a compound. 